Okay, we're live whenever you're ready. A very good morning to all parents and students. Welcome to the GSS DSA eBriefing 2020. I'm Mrs. Farhan Ideal, HD of EL for Jerome Sec, and I'll be the moderator for today's session. Now, before we begin, let me first introduce to you our principal, Mrs. Lim Su Chin. Hello and welcome, Mrs. Lim. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Jurong Secondary. Thank you for spending time with us this morning. Jurong Secondary is an established school in the West with strong academic programs and many CCAs to choose from. We are happy to share more with you today. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask us. Over to you, Fahin. All right, thank you very much, Mrs. Lim. Now, Mrs. Lim will be addressing a few uh, questions that have been put forth by some parents at the end of this session. Um, so if you do have any questions during this sharing, please click on the link at the bottom of this video. But for now, let us begin with the first segment of the day, um, which is the sharing on sports DSA. May I now invite our subject head uh, of PE, Ms. Ong Wei Chen, to share with you some information on our sports DSA. Ms. Ong, please. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, this is Wei Chen. I'm the subject head for PE in Jurong Secondary School. Welcome to the DSA briefing. Uh, allow me to start with a short presentation on our sports, DSA sports category. Okay, over the past five decades, Jurong Secondary School has a very strong foundation in the local school sports scene. Uh, we strongly believe that the values acquired through the pursuit of sporting excellence are beneficial to the holistic development of our students. This is the grounding of our vision to nurture the JSS sporting champion we, uh, who possesses the correct attitude and mindset for further success in life. In Jurong Secondary School, we offer PSA secondary exercise to the following sports. Basketball, boys and girls. Badminton, only for boys. Cross country, boys and girls, and volleyball only for girls. So what can a child who is admitted to Jurong Secondary School via DSA Sports come to expect? Um, the training program by our very good, excellent coaches who have experience and achievement in the local school sports scene. Uh, over the past five decades, we have produced athletes who have represented Singapore in some capacity. Um, Yes, and they have done the state flag, they have done the country proud, and all the, of them are managed by experienced teachers with sporting background. So if your child do come in on the DSA sports category, this is what you can come to expect. Okay. The program also provides for a JSS sports scholarship, which is... Um, which is sponsored by our school advisory committee, okay, to recognize students we have strong performance in CCA and with good conduct. The program will also provide for overseas training trips. Currently, we provide for basketball and volleyball teams, but we are definitely exploring possibility of more. Okay. Um, what will happen will be that the teams will be exposed to external training methods when they go overseas. There's an opportunity to spar with their peers from other countries and definitely a chance for team bonding. The program also allows for a sports psychology program in which we try to um, pass on mental skills for their to optimize their sporting performance and it's definitely transferable to their academic pursuit. Okay, so how has JSS done over the past five years, the more hi recent history? Um, as you can see from the scoreboard, we do have a very strong showing in the local school sports scene, uh, finishing very strongly in the zone and the national top four for the past few years. Um, this is for the volleyball side. We also have outstanding alumni who went on to be the top of their game and uh, have done well at the national exams, both in the GCA N level and the GCO levels. So many of our alumni go on to pursue, continue their passion in sports while pursuing education uh, in, a, in the next Institute of Higher Learning. Okay, working closely with parents is one effective strategy that we have continually been using. So, uh, it is something we emphasize strongly on for our teacher in charge to communicate with the parents to help ensure that the schoolwork, the holistic well-being of the child is very much taken care of. 
and we hope to continue this in if your child is able to join us on the DSA sports program. Who should apply? Okay, uh, it is not so much about the best school, but it is really about the best match. So we uh, like to welcome, invite people, students who are passionate about their particular area of sporting talent and who believe that JSS can provide the right education for them. We will also welcome anyone who may not have the opportunity to try out a particular game, but have a deep interest to try it. So please do apply. How will the application and the interview process go? Okay, from today till 5th June, the application will happen on MOE DSA portal. Shortlisted applicants will be informed of a video conferencing interview. This video conferencing interview will happen somewhere between July, 1st July to September. So uh, in the application, these are the qualities that we are looking out for. Okay. During the video conferencing interview, there'll be two segments. The first segment will be a performance task. Uh, we will let you know what needs to be done. We will give you a week to prepare for it uh, prior to the interview itself. And also during the interview, there will be a selection panel who will be asking some questions to just to find out more about each other. Okay, with that, I'm done with my presentation on the DSA sports categories. Um, please access the QR code to give us your feedback. The code is also available in the YouTube live link. Thank you very much. Over to you, Farhan. All right, thank you very much, Ms. Ong. Now, let us invite our principal, Mrs. Lim, to address some questions that have already been sent earlier to us. Mrs. Lim, please. Hi, everyone. Let me pull out the slides first. Okay. Now I'd like to go through these uh, questions with you. Thank you for submitting the questions. Um, first, my child may be eligible for more than a single criteria. Hence, I would like to know how that works. Okay, so rest assured, applicants can apply for more than one talent area from a school. On the DSA portal, you can actually indicate up to three choices and three talent areas. Okay, however, for the same school, there's a maximum of two. And if you want to apply for these two talent areas at the same school, you must indicate both as separate choices. So for example, if you're interested in sports for Jurong Secondary, and, um, and you're also interested in science, then these are two different talent areas and they will have to be reflected as two separate choices. Okay, next. What are some of the documents we need to submit for DSA? Now, not to worry. Um, actually, there are no particular documents because your child's primary school information will automatically come to us through the MOE system. So what all this information will include would be your child's academic results, the CCAs, BIA, other achievements and awards in school, NAPFA results, JSA participation. So you do not need to input any of this kind of information. However, if there's non-school activities and achievements, so things that your child has done outside of school, which are related to your child's chosen talent area, you may provide information on this on the DSA portal. This section is not compulsory and there is a limit of 10 entries. Let me continue. Question three. I understand that previous year's P6 mid-year exam results will be taken as part of the consideration. How about this year? This year is a unique year. We are all working from home. We all have to 
cope with this very challenging situation for the country. So, of course, we understand that we do not have the mid-year exam results this year uh, nationwide. So, we will take into consideration these academic results, the P6 Term 1 progress report that the school would have um, put in place and also any primary 5 results, both the first semester and second semester results. Right? Question four, if my child loses interest in the program, can he or she opt out? Well, the DSA program is a MOE policy and program that um, is put in place so that we can help the child fully develop his or her talent in that area. So it is our hope that the student can commit to this program to fully develop his or her talent. So if your child is not quite sure that he or she can sustain this program for the next four or five years, then it may be advisable to reconsider whether DSA is the best option. So it is, in a way, a commitment for the next four or five years in the secondary school. Right? Now, I'll take these two questions together. What is the aggregate for DSA admission? And what is Jurong Secondary School's cutoff? So these are for your reference, right? Actually, um, there is no particular aggregate for DSA admission. But what we do is that we take reference from MOE's admission policy. So for instance, for 2019, any student with an aggregate score of 188 and above will be eligible for the express course. So we take that into account uh, in as much as our cutoffs are as reflected below. Okay, that's for your information. Final question I have, how will you allocate the class for students who enroll through DSA? DSA students are treated no differently from the rest of our SEC 1 cohort. So next year, when our DSA students come in, together with the rest of the SEC 1 students, all will be randomly allocated to the classes based on the course that they are eligible for, whether it's NT, NA or Express. And Jurong Secondary is a pilot school for full subject-based bending. So each set one class is smaller than the usual of 40. Each set one class has about 34 students. And each set one class will have students from different courses in this form class. And they will take some lessons together, not all. Some lessons, um, and each class will comprise about 20 from Express, 9 from NA, and about 5 from NT. Right, so those are the questions that I have. Um, I'll pass the time back to Fahim uh, to direct the other questions to the other hits. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Lim. Now, the next segment is a Q&A session to address uh, questions which are specific to sports GSA. Right, these are some of the questions that we received via our Google Doc earlier. Okay, uh, first of all, let's invite our first uh, um, uh, speaker today, uh, our CCA and CCA HOD, Mr. Stanley Tan, to answer a CCA specific question on DSA. Hi, Mr. Tan. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. The, the, the first question. Yeah, so the first question that um, we received from parents is, can my child take up a second CCA if she is accepted via DSA basketball? Uh, certainly, it is um, actually an option for the child to actually take up a second CCA. It's actually allowable. Um, but we also want to uh, remind that uh, for sports DSA, when we talk about basketball, cross country, and all the rest of the DSA for sports itself, Mm -hmm. um, typically, uh, sports CC will have three training days. Mm -hmm. uh, this will mean that uh, other than the three training days, the two free days uh, are probably a good time for the students to actually catch up on their work. Uh, probably uh, also want to remind them or remind the parents that we also have other special programs, uh, mm -hmm. like example, our Inspires, in the example, our ALP and LLP program, which mm -hmm. you can actually find out more from the school website uh, mm -hmm. to know more about this program. But mean to say, um, perhaps that the the other consideration would be when it comes to the mid-year of set one, some of the students might be even be nominated for student council. 
Mm-hmm. And the council by itself is actually the second CCA. So um, we will not actually recommend that a child actually take out second CCA unless the child uh, in the mid-year after generally the mid-year assessment, uh, probably at that point of time when they are very sure that they can cope with the sports CCA and they have expressed really strong interest and perhaps the most important factor is that they are able to cope with the the secondary school life in general and then at that point of time there's always an option for them to take up a second CCA. Mm. Um, that's that's my answer to this question. Over to you. All right. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Tan. Next, let's welcome Mr. No, our um, HOD of PE, to address um, specific questions to sports DFE. May I invite Mr. No, please? Hi, Hi everyone. Mr. Hi, Hi, Mr. Paul. Hi. Okay, so the first question that parents have asked is, can I submit additional documents of videos from 2019 NSG for the school to consider? Hi. Uh, okay, uh, this year is a quite a unique year. Mm. Uh, I think uh, everyone knows that the the National Schools Games for the 2020 have been cancelled. Mm. So, in actual fact, uh quite a number of students uh, opportunity to represent the school this year have been dashed because of that uh with regards to the submission of uh, additional documents uh videos from the 2019 uh if we jurong secondary school needs any other additional information uh, we will inform the applicants at a later date via the primary school. Mm-hmm. So, uh, at this juncture, uh, applicants do not need to send any documents, videos to us until further notice. All right? Back to you, Madam Fahim. Right. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. No. Now, the next question is, will my child be guaranteed a place on the school sports team if he is accepted via DSA? What is your answer to that, Mr. No? Okay. Uh, selection for the teams participating in the national school games uh, are based on merit. Okay. And it will be done nearer to the date of competition. When we say based on merit, uh, uh, basically we are looking at a few uh, things. Firstly, uh, and most importantly, the com- uh, the commitment of the particular student, the discipline of the students, and last but not least, the ability of the students to be in the team. Okay. Uh, we do participate in other competitions other than the national schools games, uh, basically to provide opportunities to gain experience for everyone. So rest assured, everybody in the team throughout their four or five years in Jurong Secondary School, they will have uh, many opportunities to actually represent the school for that uh, CCA that they are representing. All right. So to answer the question whether the child will be guaranteed a place, there is no guarantee of a confirmed place on the team based on the reason mentioned earlier. Back to you, Madam Farhain. Okay, thank you very much again, Mr. Noor, for that very comprehensive response. Okay, so... Um, there is uh, there are two more questions which actually are very close to each other, very similar. Uh, first question is, my primary school did not offer volleyball as a CCA, so can I still apply for the DSA? Another question that is very similar is, my son's CCA is, uh, is a concert band, but your school does not uh, have it for DSA. So uh, is it advisable for my son to use badminton to apply for DSA? Okay, he only plays it as a hobby. So the, I think the, the, the main crux of the, both questions or that um, the students applying for DSA, they do not have prior CC experience. So is it is it okay for them to do that? Uh, yes, to answer the question, yes. We will welcome application as long as there is interest and passion for the particular DSA category. Now, 
uh, as you can see, quite a number of our students uh, that is representing the school, uh, they themselves doesn't have prior experience in the particular sports okay and yet now they are representing the school and some of them are even representing the nation for the combined school teams and all that uh we want to give equal opportunity to everyone mm. we want to discover hidden gem mm. and uh the thing is some of uh, the students uh, maybe due to the inevitability of the primary school offering the CCA uh, or the opportunity given in the primary school, they may mm. not be discovered. Mm. Their ability may not be discovered. But for us, we welcome them. And let us take a look at you. Uh, let us uh, check check on you during the e-interview mm -hmm. okay, so that hopefully we don't miss out on these gems. Mm. Yeah. I agree with that, yes. Okay, so is it okay we move on to the next question, Mr. No? Sure, very fine. Okay, all right. Um, now, this question um, is asking for the technical part of the sports, right? This is the first year Jurong Sec is having DSA for, for badminton for boys. I would like to find out on the selection criteria in terms of skills and academic results which the school is looking for uh, on the applicant. Or... Uh, the school is looking, or is the school looking for P6 students who are currently with the school team or have participated in external competition? Maybe you answer that part first because there's a second uh, part to it which is rather technical. So perhaps the first part about um, um, whether you are looking for P6 students who are currently with the school team for badminton? Okay. Uh... Uh, as mentioned in the earlier question, uh, not necessary for the students or the applicants to be in the school team. Mm -hmm. uh, in the matter of fact, uh, if let's say they are, if they are, they are even not in the CCA itself, we do consider these students. Okay, mm -hmm. as mentioned in the earlier question, we would like to discover these hidden gems mm -hmm. from them. Yeah. I see. Now, the second part of the question um, about the interview session itself. During the e-interview, is the school expecting the applicant to perform any footwork or display the strokes to the interviewer? Are they expected okay. to do that? Yes. Uh, all short distance participants will undergo, undergo uh, the following. Firstly, an interview, interview conducted at the primary school. Uh, within the e-interview, they are to execute a performance task related to the chosen talent area. For this case, it's badminton. Okay. We will be contacting the students okay, prior to the e interview uh, to inform them of the task that they need to perform during the e interview. The specific task that they are supposed to do will be informed later. Okay. Likelihood will be we'll be looking at footwork. Okay, and, and all that. Okay, uh, we will inform the students or the applicants later part of the day. Not to worry, we will give you enough time actually uh, to actually prepare yourself. Okay, for the performance task uh, to be shown to us during the e interview. Thank you. All right. Okay, uh, Mr. No, maybe just to share with the parents. Um, who are wondering out there because you know the primary school system and the secondary school system for CCAs are very different. You know, even as a parent, when when my child uh, moved on to secondary school, I had I had a shock because um, in primary school it was barely once or twice a week, and then in secondary school suddenly it could be as many as four times a week. You know, so for for new parents out there, perhaps you want to share with us the rough training schedule, uh, the frequency for sports CCAs of uh, this uh, sports CSEs. All right, uh, for Jurong, Sec Jurong Secondary School, uh, for those uh, students uh, involved in the sports CCA, okay, basically we will ease them in, when they're in SEC 1, we will ease them in into the CCA itself. Uh, likely, we will start off with only twice a week for the first term so that they have a feel of the training itself. Uh, subsequently, we will increase to three times a week Okay, all the way until the competition. Do bear in mind, during competition period, there is a possibility that 
the number of trainings and competition itself may be increased to four to five days because uh, we will depends on the competition date itself. If, if, it, mm. if it doesn't clash with the training, training mm. will still proceed on as per normal and the competition will proceed on uh, on, those day, on those days that let's say we don't have training. Yeah. And for the training itself in Jurong Secondary School, mm -hmm. uh, each training will last estimated about three hours. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, three hours uh, will include, okay, for example, uh, ball training or skill training and even fitness training. Uh, mm -hmm. Do take note that uh, for some of the CCAs, we do have extra trainings uh, in the morning okay in the morning uh, for them mm -hmm. to keep themselves fit and all that mm -hmm. i see okay all right so um it's it's it will be quite strenuous for the sports uh, athletes but you know um that's what we are that's who we are we're champions that's how we uh, got to where we are um I uh, so so I hope that's very clear for parents that the schedule. I mean, once a child enters secondary school, um, you know, um, it, it's going to be a different life. Okay, so for parents who are who who are looking for um, having a second or third CCA for the child, although the child is already in sports CCA, I think we need to perhaps good to reconsider because um, for one thing as well, um, students have about seven to eight, or nine subjects, right, at secondary one. So it's a lot of adjustment for them as well. Right now that you've heard um, some uh, details from Mr. No about the frequency of our sports CCAs, Mr. No, uh, last question. Uh, probably, you know, it's good to share about the qualifications of our uh, coaches and teachers. Um, how qualified are our coaches and teachers in charge of this uh, sports TSAs? Okay, uh, our current coaches and uh, teachers are uh, very, very, very qualified. Okay, uh, uh, just to, to uh, mention some of them, uh, Miss Ong Wei Chen, uh, the subject head of PE, the one that uh, uh, presented uh, the SA Sports earlier, she herself uh, is one of the teacher coach uh, for the volleyball team. Uh, currently, she is uh, one of the assistant coach for the national uh, volleyball girls team, okay, or national volleyball women's team okay uh she's very dedicated she herself in the past uh was a national team player and uh, she was also a national team captain okay uh, on top of that uh, the other teachers uh, that is involved in volleyball themselves uh are ex uh national uh, coaches like miss ng siu tuan uh, uh madam wang itself uh, was a combined school player Okay, uh, even our coach, Mr. Shen Chin, was a uh, ex uh, national uh, team coach. Okay, for the national women's team. All right, uh, for even for basketball, okay, for basketball, our coaches are very experienced. Okay, uh, they not only they coaching uh, for the school team, they also coaches for clubs. Okay, and uh, one of them even coaches for the uh, the youth team, the national youth team. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Uh, for badminton, for badminton, our teacher in charge, main teacher in charge himself, uh, mm -hmm. was a national trainee for the uh, badminton national team mm -hmm. when his younger days. Okay. All right. Uh, and he himself is a hands-on uh, teacher coach. Okay, hands-on teacher coach. All right. Uh, the other one that we I would like to mention is even our cross country team. Mm -hmm. okay, our cross country team, uh, coach himself was a middle distance runner for the national team. Okay, a middle distance runner for the national team. So, uh, from these examples, okay, you can see that uh, the teachers and the coach are highly qualified to actually develop the students. Uh, and bring them up to greater heights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Over to you, Madam Fahim. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Noor. Okay. Very comprehensive answers. Very useful um, answers, um, especially for parents who are uh, new to um, uh, secondary school life, right? Uh, very detailed answers about uh, sports DSC as well. So thank you very much, Mr. Noor. Thank you.
Thank you. Okay, um, we have a bit of time before the next session begins. So um, we are going to play for you a video of our principal, um, Mrs. Lim, who's going to share with you a little bit more about Jurong Secondary School. If you haven't already watched this, okay, it will tell you a lot of things about what Jurong Secondary School is about. Over to you, Mark. Welcome to Jurong Secondary. I'm Mrs. Lim. It is a privilege for me to introduce what Jurong Secondary can offer for your child. Choosing a secondary school is a big step and a decision not to take lightly. As parents, we all want the best for our children. I hope you will take this chance to know your child's strengths and interests. See if these are aligned to what Jurong Secondary has to offer so that you can make an informed choice. Let me explain what guides us here at Jurong Secondary. We are 57 years old as a school, an established school with a rich heritage. Jurong Secondary was started in 1963 by then PM Mr Lee Kuan Yew. We were the first secondary school in Jurong and set up as a school in the community for the community. Some of our unique traditions include Firstly, a strong Chinese tradition of inculcating values in our students. The timeless values of Zhong Qin Cheng Ai, or loyalty, industry, sincerity, and love. Secondly, Jurong Secondary is a sports powerhouse. Not only do our sports CCAs excel, but through our Learning for Life program, which provides all students with exposure to sports, Sports also helps to build character in our students, develop their teamwork and leadership skills. We are proud that our CCA leaders are diverse and come from the NT, NA and Express courses. Our non-sports CCAs have also always excelled, be it in the domains of uniformed groups, performing arts, or clubs and societies. Thirdly, we have continued to ensure our students develop well in all areas. Our vision is for all our students to be champions of mind and leaders with heart. Being champions of mind means to be resilient and have mental grit. And we are glad that our students display these values in all that they do and that they continue to excel at the national exams and progress to do even better at the JCs and Polytechnics. They are developed to be leaders with heart. School-wide, through our vibrant student experiences, we ensure that all students learn to harness their innate leadership talents, so as to lead their peers with confidence. For those who are passionate to contribute beyond the school, we help them develop a cause that they believe in and can advocate for. Jurong Secondary is also a future school and we use technology to improve our teaching and learning, help our students be curious to learn, question, and seek improvements for society. Our ALP is on environmental education, for our youth must learn to find interdisciplinary solutions to climate change and how to ensure this world is sustainable for many generations to come. Regardless of your child's strengths and interests, here in Jurong Secondary, our goal is to ensure that all our students have a fulfilling and enriching educational journey and that every child is a success story. Want to find out more on how we do this? Come for our DSA e-briefing and register your interests via the link below. We will share with you how we value every child as a success story. We provide DSA opportunities for those interested in the sports, namely basketball, volleyball, cross country and badminton, as well as those who may be passionate about service leadership to the community or in science. Do find out more about these DSA programs on our website. Welcome to Jurong Secondary. I'm Mrs. Lim. It is a privilege for me to introduce what Jurong Secondary can offer for your child.
choosing a secondary school is a big step and a decision not to take lightly. As parents, we all want the best for our children. I hope you will take this chance to know your child's strengths and interests. See if these are aligned to what Jurong Secondary has to offer so that you can make an informed choice. Let me explain what guides us here at Jurong Secondary. We are 57 years old as a school, an established school with a rich heritage. Jurong Secondary was started in 1963 by then PM Mr Lee Kuan Yew. We were the first secondary school in Jurong and set up as a school in the community for the community. Some of our unique traditions include Firstly, a strong Chinese tradition of inculcating values in our students. The timeless values of Zhong Qin Cheng Ai, or loyalty, industry, sincerity and love. Secondly, Jurong Secondary is a sports powerhouse. Not only do our sports CCAs excel, but through our Learning for Life program, which provides all students with exposure to sports, Sports also helps to build character in our students, develop their teamwork and leadership skills. We are proud that our CCA leaders are diverse and come from the NT, NA and Express courses. Our non-sports CCAs have also always excelled, be it in the domains of uniformed groups, performing arts or clubs and societies. Thirdly, we have continued to ensure our students develop well in all areas. Our vision is for all our students to be champions of mind and leaders with heart. Being champions of mind means to be resilient and have mental grit. And we are glad that our students display these values in all that they do and that they continue to excel at the national exams and progress to do even better at the JCs and Polytechnics. They are developed to be leaders with heart. School-wide, through our vibrant student experiences, we ensure that all students learn to harness their innate leadership talents so as to lead their peers with confidence. For those who are passionate to contribute beyond the school, we help them develop a cause that they believe in and can advocate for. Jurong Secondary is also a future school and we use technology to improve our teaching and learning, help our students be curious to learn, question and seek improvements for society. Our ALP is on environmental education, for our youth must learn to find interdisciplinary solutions to climate change and how to ensure this world is sustainable for many generations to come. Regardless of your child's strengths and interests, here in Jurong Secondary, our goal is to ensure that all our students have a fulfilling and enriching educational journey and that every child is a success story. Want to find out more on how we do this? Come for our DSA e-briefing and register your interests via the link below. We will share with you how we value every child as a success story. We provide DSA opportunities for those interested in the sports, namely basketball, volleyball, cross country and badminton, as well as those who may be passionate about service leadership to the community or in science. Do find out more about these DSA programs on our website. Okay, uh, thank you everybody for watching the video. Back to you, Fahai. All right, thank you very much for watching the video. Um, we've come to the end of our DSA e-briefing talk for sports. All right, um, we, we hope that we've been able to learn more about the DSA programs and have gained a better insight into how these programs are run. Okay, um, now please do leave us your feedback by clicking the link below um, the video, right? Uh, now, the service leadership talk is going to start at about 
right? And uh, SCORE, which is uh, Science, Communications and Research, will begin at 11.30. So we're going to give you some time now to um, send us your questions. If you do have any questions, there is a link at the bottom of the video. Uh, we're going to give you some time to send us some questions if you do have uh, them for uh, service leadership as well as school, right? And we will try to address uh, to address all these questions later. Now, um, not all questions will be answered live because we have a lot of questions. We received a lot of questions. Um, in fact, within a day, all right, there were a, a lot more new questions. So um, we will um, answer the remaining questions on the website. We'll actually have an FAQ page for DSA and um, you can check out the responses there if it's not addressed today, right? All right, thank you for joining us today and we hope that you'll have a great weekend ahead. Thank you very much. We'll see you again in about three minutes. Thank you very much. Very good morning to all parents and students. Welcome to the GSS DSAE Briefing 2020. I'm Mrs. Lauren Ideal, HOD of English, and I'll be the moderator for today's session. Before we begin, let me first introduce to you our principal, Mrs. Lim Su Chen. Hello and welcome, Mrs. Lim. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> welcome to Jurong Secondary. Thank you for spending time with us this morning. Jurong Secondary is an established school in the West with strong academic programs and many CCAs to choose from. We are happy to share more with you today. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask us. Over to you, Fahin. Thank you, Mrs. Lim. 
Thank you, Mrs. Lim. Now, Mrs. Lim will be addressing a few questions that have been put forth by parents um, at the end of this presentation segment. So if you do have any questions um, during the sharing, please click on the link at the bottom of this video. You'll see the link there. Just give us your questions and we'll try to answer them the best that we can. Okay, now um, let us now begin uh, with the second segment for today's e-briefing, which is sharing on service le uh, leadership DSA. Uh, may I now invite our head of CCE and CCA, Mr. Stanley Tan, to share with uh, to share with you some information on this DSA. Over to you, Stanley Tan. All right. Uh, good morning, uh, parents. Uh, thank you for your time to actually attend this uh, DSA session of service leadership. Um, so uh, please give me a while while I set up my laptop to actually share with you the presentation slides. All right, again, uh, now I'm ready. Uh, as we mentioned, welcome everyone. Um, I'm Mr. Stanley Tan, the HOD for CCE. Uh, in this school that's in charge of the VIA program in the school. VIA means values in action. And I'm glad that all of you can come on board here to actually know more about our GSS DSA program for service leadership. Now, what is this uh, DSA leadership about, service leadership for GSS is about? Maybe first I would like to elaborate more about the philosophy and the values that we want to inculcate in our students. At the end of the four to five years of the DSA program for our students, we hope that our students to be able to give them the chance to enable and empower our students to live with heart out of love and service to the school. And let's not forget out of the domains of the school, the four walls of the school, there's a bigger community out there that need the help of the, of the students. All right. This is pretty in line with the school visions of champions of mind and leaders with heart. Uh, of which that we want our students to actually cultivate and inculcate the values of integrity, empathy, moral courage. And this is pretty much, as I mentioned, that is consistent with the school values of loyalty, industry, sincerity and love, which is the four core school values that's unchanged since the beginning days of our school. I also want to highlight that uh, one of the cons one of the things that we are go uh, to talk about is actually the history of the school uh, if you watch the corporate video earlier or even on the school website, you'll know that actually Jurong Secondary School is the first secondary school in Jurong. And that is why we are given the privilege of calling ourselves Jurong Secondary School. And it started by the community leaders as Mr. Lee Kuan Yew at that point of time actually came to the Jurong industry area and they actually request for the selecting out of a secondary school because there's no secondary school in this area. All right, so by the fact that we are a school started by the community, the whole dimensions of social ser the service to the community is actually very important. It is general is actually the ethos of our school, of which that we really want our students to outreach to the community. And at a certain point of time, we will want our students, each and every one of them, whether you are a student or whether you are a student leader, CC leader and what's not, to actually serve the school and most important to outreach to the community and be a good ambassador for the school and the student body. So this is pretty much our philosophy of this design of the program and the school values and the personal character traits that we want our students to have for the DSA program. As we mentioned here, other than the four school core values, we must not forget we'll need to this uh, DSA program of ours. We ask ourselves this very important question. When our students end their four years of journey with the DSA program, what are the type of students that we want to see? All right, we have a hard conversation about this, and I'm glad that we have actually come up with this clarity. Um, the core values of the DSA students that will come out of this program in the four to five years are actually on the three character traits of gratitude, graciousness, and greed. Uh, allow me to elaborate more about what does the three G actually stand for. I think the first one is rather important. Is uh, first and foremost, we have to understand that Singapore, in fact, our children are actually quite blessed in the sense that in general, our families, our Singapore families, our Singapore students do not generally face poverty. We do not have natural disasters. Everything is generally okay. Um, they have no issue with regards to any uh, 
functioning of their daily activities and what's not. But in reality, if you are willing to see further, you are willing to see deeper, there will always be groups, uh, be it in the community or what's not, even in the school that we would want to actually let them uh, show empathy for. So I think the first important thing is to look, see and look far, such that they can actually be thankful for the things that actually they are getting, the and whatsoever things that the people, students or parents or even the community are giving them and to be appreciative of others. And in the fact of being appreciative of others, this social empathy will come, this appreciation will come as such that will give them the motivation to reciprocate back to the society. Now, the other G that we mentioned is graciousness. I think as a developing country, as we move on to become a developed country, where we are talking about the, the more advanced stage of, as uh, students, or even when we talk about the future workers, it is important for them to actually be very gracious. All right. Uh, when we talk about graciousness and the fact that when in the up in the in the due time when they actually work um, as an adult, it is important to know that the world is no longer just about them. As they go out to the to the outside world, they have to learn to be respectful. They have to be very generous in their words and deeds. And I think let's not forget to show concern at others. And the third quality of greed is actually quite, quite an interesting statement as to share with you. Um, because in the whole reality of the world, when we talk about whether you're talking about service learning or what's not, or even when they go out to work in the future, it is important to know that the life is not so easy after all. There will be certain obstacles that they will face. There will be certain challenges that they face. In fact, even during the whole DSA program, when they actually come up with projects and what's not, they will be facing some issues such as conflicts, idea generations, and even um, setbacks because of the fact that the maybe um, their friends are not working with them or even they can't actually command their friend respect what's not. So it is important for them to actually be aware that there are challenges and to actually in the midst of these challenges to show resilience and persevere in the face of challenge. And not, not forget, in the whole spirit of greed, to not actually see challenges as a setback, but to actually as a, a chance for them, opportunity for them for personal and team growth. So these are the three core values that we hope to inculcate for our DSA students. Now, when we talk about the program design, I understand there's a question regards to what the type of opportunities that our students will have. I will elaborate on this uh, later. But essentially, when we talk about this four to five years program, there are generally two phases, all right? So you can actually actually mention, you can even understand this as a fact of a lower set program or upper set program, but it's not. But whatever the case is, we focus on a few things here. In first is actually the knowledge of service learning, the skills of service learning, and the values that we want the students to have, such that they can become leaders eventually when it comes to set four and five, we are hoping that they are able to stand up to the front and then rally the course mate, the batch mate, even their juniors to actually carry out impactful committee projects. So at the very primary level, as a lower set students, we are talking about the key traits of advocacy, on which that in this case, they need to look, look see and feel far and deep to understand the, the challenges of the society in general, not just about their school, it's not just about their home, but to actually look at the vulnerable students, the vulnerable uh, social causes out there and be brave enough to speak out and say, hey, we've got to do something. And throughout this journey, there'll be various uh, programs, learning journeys and what's not to give them that exposure. Now, as it comes to the sec two, uh, uh, second half of sec two or even to the upper levels, we are asking them to be activists, all right, of which the whole concept of activism comes in, whereby they were supposed to lead and shout out to their batchmate, to their juniors and what's not, even to their fellow peers all right, to catalyst a social change, all right, uh, in the school and even throughout the community through building a network of passionate individuals and community organizations. So when you talk about organizations here, it can be very varied. When you talk about this could be, uh, some examples is actually the VWOs, what we call the volunteer welfare organizations. We are working very closely with Taman Jurong community clubs. We are working very closely with the new chapter in the committees. And these are generally the community resources that we can actually harness such that we can make the change to the community. All right. So essentially, as I mentioned, there are three different areas of programs and enablers. Uh, first one is actually what we term as opportunities. Um, and second is actually community partnership. 
as we mentioned earlier, we are embedded in Jurong and we are a key partner with Taman Jurong. Um, we have been working with them for various projects. Uh, in fact, um, there are various opportunities that will come along the way. And it's not, let's not forget that the whole dimension of leadership is also very important. So there will be leadership trainings that we will provide for students such that they will actually develop the core skill to actually get the to get the projects running and to actually motivate and inspire the rest of the students. So some of the possible areas or some of the programs that uh, we have in line with this is actually as such. So example, when you talk about leadership trainings, there will be camps and workshops. Um, there will be leadership conference um, of uh, leadership conference where we will send our students to be inspired by actually youth activists and not. Um, most important, we must not forget that whole connection between the teacher, mentor, and the student. So throughout any project uh, or any program itself, the every student will be allocated a teacher mentor that will see through the child's development over the four to five years. Um, there will be various opportunities. I also want to highlight that we are realistic that at the set one level, we need to ease them into the program. So obviously, when it comes to the skill sets, and the project management skills that we want them to do, or even the scope of the project that we want them to do is also realistically uh, uh, designed such that they do not burn out. Um, so some of the things that we can have is example, when they are at the set one level, uh, they can become the project leader for the level VIA for the set one. Uh, they can even be organizing the assembly program to actually share their experience with the students on why the level have to engage in this project for the set ones. Uh, as it goes on after the various arrays of leadership trainings and conference such that their visual visions and even their understanding of the world is, uh, more, uh, is more developed, uh, we will be getting them to actually do this uh, project on this case, this program that we have an in-house program called Project Compassion of which that they will actually start to do a full project uh, outreach to the community. Uh, later, I will share with you a video of a project that we have done uh, last two years ago to let you have a better sense of what is a project compassion about. As let's not forget, as we mentioned, when they talk about serving the community, they also can consider serving the school. So they can also be volunteering themselves in the various school events like Teachers' Day, Sports Day, or even any of the type of fundraising that the, the school is organizing for the community. Um, the community partners, as I mentioned, are varied, are numerous. Uh, this is just some of the community partners that we have been engaging for the past few years. So as I mentioned, uh, we are working closely with TJCC a lot because of the fact that we are part of the Taman Chulong family. We work with TJCC youth tractors, we work with uh, PAYM, what we call the People Association Youth Movement. Uh, we also take part in this Youth for Courses competition uh, organized by Citibank and YMCA and the various volunteer welfare organizations. Uh, interestingly, the VWO that we engage in really depend on the social costs that the child or the project team actually want to engage. So to give you an example, let's say if one of the group is thinking about the social cost of animal welfare, all right, and they are talking about uh, giving, uh, sending the message of uh, pet care, all right, pet abuse, the situation of pet abuse, and was not uh, to the to the public or even to their batchmate, then perhaps we will actually source out the VWO like Aquarius or even um, um, even uh, like uh, Aquarius and was not to actually engage them in the VWO. So as it comes along, uh, we are pretty dynamic. But as I mentioned, the whole journey throughout the four to five years, um, there will be project mentors so actually guide them throughout the whole journey. Um, this is a very interesting question. I think previous round for the sports uh, uh, DSA, uh, there are parents asking about what is this interview going to be like? So I'm going to give you a glimpse and perhaps give you an idea of what would you will expect your child to experience when they come for the applications. Um, so on the applications, we are talking about who are we looking for, all right? As we, if you can catch what I present so far, you'll realize that Mr. Tan is really talking about the heart. Is talking about empathy, compassion, uh, leadership, and passions. So when we talk about students who want to come forth for this program, we are looking for students with strong characters and also the potential for leadership. Uh, I want to assure you that um, perhaps at some 
who have some DSA program from other schools, they are very specific to mention that they are talking about student counselors, prefects, CCA leaders. Um, let's be assured that uh, we are also looking at that, but not in that strict manner. As long as a child in his in his primary school time have actually expressed certain leadership um, skills for that matter, it is actually okay to actually apply. You need not be restricted to say that, ah, I want to serve, I want to take part in the DSA program, but too bad when I was uh, set one, when I was in primary four and five and six, my teacher never nominated me for CC leaders or prefect or even monitors, then I don't think I have a chance. That's not true. Uh, as Mr. Law in the sports CC, uh, sports DSA earlier mentioned, we are looking for hidden gems. So let's not restrict and limit yourself to this. So any student who actually show the compassion and heart to actually lead in the future when it comes to secondary school are really welcome to take part in the applications. As I mentioned, it's all about displaying leadership skills. Um, so when it comes to the service to the school and to the community, uh, in the interview, they can actually quote their experience in running or even be taking part in the school uh, in the school VIA program. All right. Um, and throughout the whole thing, what we are looking out for is actually students who actually display passions for service and community related activities outside of school. So these are the three criteria uh, that we have actually prescribed in the DSA applications. Um, let me give you an insight of what is going to happen when your child actually apply for this and you're called for the selections. All right. So it will be a one single setting. Uh, there will be a group interview. We will not do individual interview uh, simply because we do know the stress of individual interview. We are not here to stress the child out, uh, but more actually having a group interview also allow the students to be more relaxed and, and also be more spontaneous in their response. So please be assured we are not there to actually be stressed the students. We will just make it uh, usually for typically for interview selection, we make it as a conversation. All right, there'll be questions that we ask uh, to actually elicit a response. So first of the part one of the online interview will be uh, more of some sets of questions that your child have to answer uh, to know more about your child's interests and passions in service to the community and the leadership skills. So some of the suggestions that I can uh, give to the parents is uh, do walk through with your child what is the type of leadership or service program that they have actually take part in. So uh, the, the typical level VIA they have done in primary school, all right, and perhaps at a certain point of time, they have actually done some social or community project outside of school, all right. Uh, these are some of the things that they can quote to us. And let's, I also want to assure you that um, all these records or this information has been pre-downloaded, uh, will be pre-downloaded to the school. So we will have a good picture and a good information about your child's involvement in the school program. Uh, the second part of the group interview will be actually a situational exercise, all right, whereby the students could, could be from the same school, all right, could be from different schools. We will actually be collaborating online on the, uh, the platform itself. We will give them a project task, a simple project task, uh, giving them a time of about 30 minutes for them to come up with a very short plan and also a very short presentation on a, deep, a social project that they want to engage in. Um, I'll be also honest to say that when we come to this stage, a lot of the project doesn't come to the fruition. Many of them actually stop halfway. It's either the students cannot have time to finish planning the project or don't have the time to prepare the PowerPoint. But the whole thing is not about the completion. It's about them working with a team of people uh, expressing their communication skills, expressing their leadership skills, and also their idea generation. So it is with this in mind that from the two interview that we can actually be helping you, um, helping you to get to know your child uh, better in terms of the key traits that we are looking for for our DSA students. Uh, as I mentioned, there are three key values or key things that we are looking for, just to give you an insight. Obviously, we are talking about students who is highly motivated, all right, uh, the zest to actually help others, the zest to actually lead, the zest to actually come forward, uh, being vocal and being uh, brave, all right, and the passion to actually want to do something. So that's why when I, uh, when we talk about this look, look, feel and see far and deep, 
I think this is a very important quality that we want our Singapore children to have, uh, to actually have this sense of empathy and this uh, social awareness. Um, and from there, hopefully it will steer a fire in their heart and say, I want to do something for these vulnerable groups. And from there, we actually come forward to the school DSA program and come to JSS and we are keen to take in your child and develop them to become the future leaders of Singapore. Okay. So um, this marks the end of my PowerPoint slides. Um, um, as I mentioned, there are two key, uh, key personnel in charge of this. I'm Mr. Stanley Tan and the other colleague of mine is assistant dear head, Mr. Muhammad Faizuli. Um, you can actually, if there's any further inquiry, you can actually email to us, or if not, you can just call the school direct. We will be glad to actually answer your further query. Um, so before I end my PowerPoint, uh, we will be sharing a video that uh, my team has actually prepared. Um, it's actually this project that my students two years ago has embarked. It's actually called Project Kuchin. Um, from the whole Project Kuchin two and a half minutes video, I hope that you will have a good idea of how a typical project actually comes from the idea generation to the partner sourcing, to the actual service, to the impact of the students, and the most important, the impact to the social cause that they are serving. So without further ado, I will pass the time to my colleague, Mr. Mark, to actually show you the video. Then I will come back uh, again to answer all your Q&A questions. Thank you very much. Over to you, Mark. Since independence from 1965, Singapore has worked its way up the global standing and has achieved much that the world thought were not possible, especially becoming a first world country. However, this has made many of us citizens a lot more busy with our work, social life, and this caused us to neglect some of the less fortunate. Be it humans or animals, they lurk around in parts of society that are obvious to many of us, but we choose to stay oblivious. If so, do we continue to stay oblivious, or should we take the initiative to support them? One avenue of compassion and initiative to go forward and help raise awareness for animals will be Project Cooking, set to promote awareness for cats. To do so, they have been carrying out adoption drives and the sales of merchandise. firmly believe that we should not ignore those who need help, but instead lend a helping hand and support them, be it human or animal. All lives are equal, and the animals' lives are as precious and unique as ours.
Okay, uh, thank you everybody for watching the video. Back to you, Ms. Vine. Thank you very much, Mark. Now, um, let us invite our principal, Mrs. Lim, to address some questions that have been sent to us earlier. Mrs. Lim, please. Sure. Just give me one moment to share the slides. Right, I would like to address some of the general questions that have come in so that we can help to clarify with parents this, D this whole DSA process and application. So first question, my child may be eligible for more than a single criteria, hence I would like to know how that works. And so not to worry, you can apply for more than one talent area from a school. On the DSA portal, you can indicate up to three choices and therefore three talent areas and if you want to choose the same school you will need you have a maximum of two talent areas that you can indicate and these have to be indicated as separate choices so for instance if you are keen on service leadership for Jurong Secondary and also science for Jurong Secondary those can be two of your choices and your third choice can be another school in a different talent area Right, so that's the first question. The second question, what are some of the documents to submit for DSA? Actually, the process is simplified so that you do not need to submit several documents. You do not need to submit any documents at all because automatically your child's primary school information will be shared with us back end through the MOE systems. So this information will include your child's uh, P5 and P6 academic results, CCA records, VIA involvement, all school-based achievements and awards, NAPFA results, GSA participation. So you do not need to input this information. Nonetheless, if you would like to provide information on activities and achievements that your child has done outside of school, which are related to the chosen talent area, there is a section to input this information in the DSA secondary portal. There's a limit of 10 entries and you do not need to submit supporting documents for these through the portal. Okay, third question. Previous years, we would take into account P6 mid-year exam results. But this year, very unique year, challenging year, we are all at home working online. And we know nationwide, there are no mid-year exams for all schools, right? So in terms of the academic results, we will take this into consideration. It will be the P6 Term 1 Progress Report, which the school would have arranged for the child. And also all the P5 results for Semester 1 and Semester 2. Now, if your child loses interest in the program, can he or she opt out. DSA is a program that um, MOE has put in place so that our students can fully develop the talent and typically they need time. So it is MOE's policy that a student will commit to the program and sustain the program for the next four to five years. So in the event that your child may not be really sure that he or she can sustain this interest, then we would say it's advisable to reconsider whether DSA is the right option. The next two questions, I'll take them together. What is the aggregate for DSA admission and what is Jurong Secondary's cutoff for this year's intake? Right. So the cutoff that we have uh, for this year is for your reference. And in terms of aggregate for DSA admission, actually there is no such aggregate. What we do, what all schools do, is to take reference from MOE. And MOE's admission policy for 2019 is that as long as a student has scored um, an aggregate of 188 and above, he or she will be eligible for the express course. So we take reference from this as well. Right? And I have a final question to address. Important question, how do we allocate the DSA students to our SEC 1 classes? So the short answer is no different from the rest of the SEC 1 cohort. 
Okay, all together, DSA students and the rest of the Set 1 cohort, when they come in next year, we will randomly allocate them to our Set 1 classes. So we will have eight classes. And we take into account, of course, which course that they're eligible for because Jurong Secondary is a pilot school for full subject-based spending. This is an arrangement where each Set 1 class is smaller than the normal smaller than our usual 40. We have approximately only about 34 students in each class. And each class will have students from different courses in this form class. So approximately about 20 students from Express, about 9 from NA, about 5 from NT. All right, I hope um, this answers some of your queries. I will hand over the time back to Fahain, um, who, will direct, uh, who will help to facilitate answering the rest of the questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Mrs. Lim. Now, the next segment is a QA and a uh, session to address um, questions specific to service uh, leadership DSA. And um, now I'm going to invite Mr. Stanley Tan again uh, HOD of CCE and CCA to address this question. Um, hi again, Mr. Tan. Uh, good morning again, everyone. Yeah, hi. Okay, um, the first question that parents have for you today, um, are there specific CCAs that my child must be in for DSA service leadership? Okay, uh, so to answer this question, um, there is actually no specific requirement for the child to be in a specific CCA. Uh, this is a bit different from the sports DSA that we mentioned. When a child is in sports DSA, when he comes in via the volleyball channel, uh, mm -hmm. she will definitely have to be in the volleyball CCA. Mm -hmm. So for the DSA for service leadership, it is not of any concern that the child have to be in any CCA. In fact, for this program itself, the students, when the set one, when your child come into Jurong Secondary School at the set one, uh, he or she will actually take part as the main cohort in the CCA selection. We have about 23 CCAs in all uh, for the child to actually choose. Uh, so there's no fixed requirement that the child actually have to be in a specific CCA. Um, but I also want to remind that uh, that will also mean that for the service leadership program, uh, mm -hmm. some of the programs and the project that will be happening will be on the one of the weekday afternoons and we mm -hmm. will actually be uh, likely be looking at Monday because that's a typical day where we run our enrichment. Mm -hmm. So other than the CCA that they have to take part in, be it in NCC or Girl Guides or in Red Cross or mm -hmm. even a band and what's not, they will be taking part on, they will be involved in certain afternoons to be involved in the student uh, service leadership program. Mm -hmm. I also want to highlight that uh, one of the uh, thing that um, is a CCA actually also run student uh, project compassions. So we are hopeful that when our DSA students, when they come to SEC 3 and 4, because they got more experience in doing project compassion, they can in fact be the mentor to their course mate and their batch mate in running the CCA student initiated projects. All right. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Tan. Let's proceed to the second question. Right. What kind of opportunities will my daughter get in her four to five years in the service leadership DSA to strengthen visibility of hers? Um, I think earlier, first and foremost, I have to apologize. It seems to me that for the viewers on the YouTube live, you can't see my slides. Um, but earlier in the presentation, I have actually mentioned, so I'm going to uh, repeat again for, for, for clarity is essentially we are talking about three areas, all right? When we talk about the students uh, coming to the DSA program, there will be three areas of uh, program that we actually run for students. Um, as I mentioned about the whole thematics of look, see, and feel people, it's important for them to be able to have a chance to actually see and feel, okay? So when we talk about this, we'll be sending our students for attachments. Example attachments could be uh, going to the Taman Jurong youth sectors to take part in their lunch distribution exercise mm -hmm. or on the sec upper secondary level the students might be actually attending the meet the mp sessions and be the secretarial so that they can actually have a good mm -hmm. sense of the issues that the mm -hmm. resident is damage drawing is facing uh, as i mentioned earlier there'll be conference where they will actually get to listen to inspiring leaders about social activisms mm 
mm. and also having a chance to as uh, visit exhibitions where they actually get to see fellow uh, students are uh, doing social projects and uh, making a social impact to the artists. So that is actually pretty much what we talk about the see and the feel. Mm. Now let's talk about, the, talk about the doing itself. In general, when we talk about this, let's not forget that service leadership, a very main part of service leadership is leadership trainings. Mm. So um, there will be workshops to actually hone their skills, to hone their experience in some key traits of leadership like communication, uh, setting a direction, inspiring others, conflict management and what's not. Uh, there will be various camps that they will be attending, there will be various workshops they will be attending and they mm. even be attached to some of the social organizations to actually be the observer or in fact perhaps at a certain point to be the organizer for some of the social projects. That's pretty much we actually define um, as one of the leadership opportunities that we actually have for the students. And the third dimension, as I mentioned, is that the learning itself cannot be just restricted to the school itself. Let's not forget there's actually uh, youth leaders out there mm -hmm doing a wonderful job for the communities and we are very enthusiastic to send them up. Of mm. course, under the mentor of our teachers who actually be working with all these youth activists, working with all these youth workers or even mm. the social activists that's been doing a wonderful job out there. And mm. let's not forget that these are true for our students to actually be learning from them. So mm. um, these are the three areas of the training that I mentioned. Mm. All right, over to you, Mrs. Adio. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Dan. Uh, the next question. Um, my son is active in the CC, all right? Uh, he will follow me to do volunteer work, uh, but this is not reflected anywhere in the school documents. Can he still apply, although his involvement are not official ones? Um, this is a very interesting question. In fact, this is a very important question. Mm. Um, because earlier in my presentation, we did talk about uh, one of the criteria in this case is perhaps that the students' involvement in community work outside mm. of school. Mm. I also want to highlight that whatever that happened in school, be it their level VIAs that they do in their primary school, whatever competition regards to social service mm. or even leadership will be all recorded and will be given to all of us. So we will have mm. a mental picture of the child's uh, involvement in the school-based wow. program. But let's not worry about this because when it comes to the e-interview itself, uh, we will just ask the child's question like, have you actually done any social service work outside of school? Mm -hmm. um, and at a certain point of time, we are not just talking about this because when we talk about community service, it's very broad. When we talk about mm -hmm. community service, we could even be talking about a typical model like uh, CC, U tractors and what's not. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes, interestingly, the service do at home, service at home, meaning to say helping the parents to do housework, taking mm -hmm. care of their siblings. As I mentioned, we are not that fixated on the impact of the project, the depth of the project or the complexity of the involvement, but more in terms of their attitudes and their social capacity to actually help others. Mm -hmm. But definitely, if your child has been doing community work outside of school, mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to the interview itself, we will definitely be sourcing for this information and please mm -hmm. do actually state also as well if we miss out the question for you. But I'm pretty sure within my question sets that I have prepared for the interview, uh, this question will definitely come and in mm -hmm. fact, we will definitely be able to extract out these uh, qualities as well in the whole time that your child actually talk about the experience, whether is it outside of school or within the school program. Sure. Okay. Um, now, I think it's good for parents to know, um, I think many of them have this question, how will a typical service leadership project look like, a typical one? Okay, perhaps um, let me just run through with you the, the main frame of the, when we talk about this uh, whole thing about the students coming forward mm -hmm. uh, to mm -hmm. give some ideas all the way from the idea generation, all the way to the execution, all the way to the reflections, mm -hmm. perhaps. Um, so this is there's this this uh, pedagogy is a is a pedagogical approach called a service learning approach that is actually adopted by uh, people associations and uh, national youth council mm -hmm. that we have actually been using for the past few years. So mm -hmm. one of the main dimension of this um, whole service learning approach is all about this thing called social awareness. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. typically a student group when they come forward um be it whether is it a class or is it a cca or maybe a free response group so example let me just use project coaching as example all right so in the video you will see that there is this a uh, whole group of students uh just to give you a background these mm-hmm. students come from different ccas they all come from different classes they are not even in the same primary school they just happen to be coming along walking along and then at certain point one activist say perhaps that uh, we want to do something for something all right so when they say okay so this group came along and say okay it seems that i have observed a problem i have mm-hmm. saw a cat being abused at the market and mm-hmm. i'm uncomfortable about that that spark mm-hmm. of passion the spark mm-hmm. of interest the spark of uncomfortableness actually create the student to come forward and say maybe i should get my friends to come forward to do something about it because it is not right so mm-hmm. certain part of time this initial idea often come with the child able to see and feel deep about issues so mm-hmm. this gentleman come along and say okay i want to gather my friends so he start to ask around and then after when this group comes along diverse group vulnerable because they are all raw they do know that there is a problem but they don't know what to do and they say let us do a project compassion all right so they come forward to apply for this but obviously for dsa program it will be a structured program or it's pretty much the same story um of which that uh we get aware of this we actually deploy a mentor so i have a very good i have a group mm-hmm. of eia teachers in my committee that's very dedicated we have we call them big heart people uh. right really big heart because they really have the social empathy and uh, really a passion to serve um I'm glad that I'm well honored to have them in my committee and we will mm-hmm. deploy one of the teacher to actually have this chance to actually link up with them and the other generation quite interesting the main thing that we we'll always ask is what is the social cost all right could be elderly could be pets could be children could be you could be family could be physical disabled what's not mm-hmm. and the next dimension about this is which exactly which organization you want to actually serve all right then thereafter then the next question i think the typical model is a student will start to plan a whole array of activity because they thought this is what the organization wants and mm-hmm. i think this is a bigger setback for many of us but we do not do it this way we mm-hmm. and we anticipate the social cost and then we thereafter also mm-hmm. source of what is the social the organization want to engage mm-hmm. and then we go out to them so that's why for the project coaching they actually engage in cat welfare society mm-hmm. all right we have has to talk to the director the ceo of the organizations we actually have a chance to sit down at the conference room in the in the in the vwo and then asking them about what is the typical works of this organization and then we ask a very true question as a student of jss what can we do for you mm. all right so it is not just about what we want to do but it's a case of asking the next question backward is what can we do for you then the 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 relationship is actually built up um it was a very dynamic it's a very interesting relationship is mm-hmm. that uh, if you remember there was this uh, indian lady she was actually the 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 one of the manager of, of the vwo she she was so passionate and so helpful to help this project that she see through all the way together with the teachers mm-hmm. uh in the video you also see miss yani my colleague actually mm-hmm. doing the idea generation so after when they come back from the vwo we we'll all come back to school got the information that we want the problem that we see and then when it come to idea generation was not that's where the whole works of leadership and project management comes along all mm-hmm. right and mm-hmm. thereafter will be the actual execution um the whole reality is that in the video you only see them doing a point of sales at vivo city but mm-hmm. that's what they do only is because mm-hmm. what they don't see is that in order to know the plight of the cats and the mm-hmm. abuse that they are facing they mm-hmm. actually it to do a series of attachment to the organization itself so mm-hmm. they went over a few weekends uh, taking care of the cats interacting the cats washing the cage and what's not so that they actually have a good sense of what is the abuse and the mm-hmm. type of situation that the cats are in and this whole awareness is very important because when they go back to the point of sales it's not just about selling merchandise it's about selling a message and by the fact that they have actually done the attachment they have a very qualified view and a very wide view of the whole plight of cat abuse in singapore on the society in general and that's where they actually be able to sell the social message to the public at vivo vivo city itself so it's not just about the sales of merchandise it's about the spread of social message and they do not just end there all right because after engaging the committee they also go back to school 
and also send some social messages to their peers through posters and actually uh, brochures to actually be spreading the social message. It's not just about Singaporean, it's about GSS students doing a part for pet care. All right. So after that, the conclusion will be often, most of the time, with the project completion, it's often a time for celebrations, mm -hmm. whereby the mentors will actually be setting them down and then talking about what they learn, what mm -hmm. are the challenges, and the challenges, mm -hmm. as I mentioned in my presentation earlier, is not a setback, but it's actually an opportunity for improvements. And often the time, I also want to highlight something very interesting, um, is that a lot of time, my students do not end the project that the year. Many of them come back again and want to do more for the organization. So I got I got many students within my fold that actually have done the project and extend the project and lead and mentor the, the juniors for the past three years. I got students running this project for three years and they come back every year. Mm. That is the DSA program for that is yes. great. It's wonderful to hear. Thank you very much, Mrs. Zan, for sharing that with us. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Now, we've come to the end of our DSA e-briefing talk um, for service leadership. We hope that you'll be able to, you, you've been able to learn a lot about the DSA program and you've gained a better insight into how this program is run. Now, please do leave us your feedback by clicking on the link below the video. Thank you very much for joining us today and have a great weekend. Goodbye. Right, a very good morning to all parents and students. Welcome to the GSS DSA e-briefing 2020. I'm Mrs. Farhain Ideal, HOD of English, and I'll be the moderator for today's session. Now, before we begin, let me first introduce to you our principal, Mrs. Lim Su Chin. Hello and welcome, Mrs. Lim. Hi, everyone. Good morning and a warm welcome to Jurong Secondary. Thank you for spending time with us this morning. Jurong Secondary is an established school in the West with strong academic programs and many CCAs to choose from. We are happy to share more with you today. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask us. Over to you, Fahai. Thank you very much, Mrs. Lim. Now, Mrs. Lin will be addressing a few questions uh, that have been put forth by some parents at the end of the session. So if you do have any questions during the sharing, please click on the link um, at the bottom of, of this video. Now, um, let us now begin with the third and final segment of today's um, e-briefing, which is the sharing on SCORE, or Science, Communication and Research. May I now invite our Head of Science, Mr. Eric Tan, to begin his presentation. Mr. Tan, please. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for being with us this morning. I'll be sharing on the uh, DSA for SCORE. SCORE stands for Science, Communication and Research. Now, this is actually what the whole program is really about. Uh, actually, at the four corners, you see students being involved in activities, and these are actually our current DSA students in SCORE. Right, so they are given opportunities to present, they are given opportunities to work in groups, and they are given opportunities to also engage in uh, science research. So we're at the core of what we really want in this program is to develop principled and passionate investigators and communicators of science. Now, there are actually two 
um, I would say two key areas that we are really looking at, which is really for students to be involved in science research and also for students to be able to communicate science, right? Because we believe that science is all around us. Even in this current situation of COVID, there's a lot of science in it, right? In any news article that you see, you will actually see uh, scientists, doctors, uh, researchers talking about how the virus works, how do we actually go about looking for uh, a, a cure to the virus and why is it so difficult to look for the cure. And even now, if you, if you are reading the news, um, the researchers are actually talking about how COVID-19 has actually mutated. Right, Their fear is that it has actually mutated to uh, the human uh, body and it's even harder to find a uh, vaccine in this current state. So all this information that the scientists and the researchers have is very scientific, right? They must be able to communicate it across to uh, the masses to the to, to, in, in layman language so that people can actually understand what it actually means. And that is really why one of the focus of this program is for our students to actually become effective communicators of science knowledge. It is not sufficient to just become good researchers. Even if you have good research, you must still be able to sell your idea. You must be able to tell others what you have found out. Why is your research so revolutionary or why is it so groundbreaking? And if scientists are not able to do that, then you know the work that they have, uh, the effort that they have uh, uh, put into their research is actually wasted. So when we look at the uh, student outcomes, right, that we wanted to to develop in our students at the end of the program, we think that there are actually five uh, dispositions that are key to developing the students in these areas. But the first, of course, is curiosity, and it is no secret that. As a scientist, you really must be curious about the world around you. Like I said earlier, everywhere around us is science. Right? So as a student, are they actually curious about what is happening around them? Right? Why do things work a certain way? Right? And these are things which we want students to develop. The second disposition certainly is critical thinking. Right? Because above and beyond just being curious, they must actually think critically think critically about the phenomena. Why are things happening a certain way? How do they go about finding out relationships between uh, uh, between systems, between natural systems, between physical systems, right? The third disposition is creativity. Now, why is creativity important? Because in embarking on any research, the scientists must actually think about creative ways of how the research can be done. Right? In a particular investigation, there can be many variables. Right? So how do they control the variable? How do they decide what is it that they want to study? What are the different variables that needs to be changed? And what are the variables that needs to be controlled? Right? So the creativity in finding a solution is very important. Let me give you an example. If you recall, there was actually an incident where um, there was a period of time where the MRT trains kept breaking down. And SMRT had a very difficult time trying to identify what was the issue with the train. Right? If you actually go online and search for uh, the team that actually found out the solution to the train, which was actually some signal signaling fault, uh, it was actually unique to only one particular train. That particular train, which ran the same route, every time it ran the same route, the moment it crosses uh, another train on, a, on the same parallel path, which is going in a different direction, it would short circuit the system and cause a fault. Right? I mean, that is something which does not get reflected in the system, but it took the team of engineers uh, 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 quite a while to come up with a unique um, uh, way to analyze the situation from the data that they had. Right? So, that part of the creativity is actually very important in scientists. Fourth, collaboration, which is also an obvious uh, disposition that we want students to have, because in real life, science is not done alone. Scientists don't work alone in the lab, uh, you know, mixing chemicals and, and coming up with a, a new invention on their own. 
science is actually a lot on collaboration. Uh, scientists build ideas of each other. Even in the earlier times of uh, uh, Einstein, uh, Newton, and so on and so forth, uh, many of the theories could be attributed to them, but when you look at the history of how they actually came up with the theories, it was actually leveraged on many of the other wrong theories that were previously postulated by scientists. Right? So in this current real world, science, scientists don't work alone. They have to work in teams. Right? And increasingly, you are seeing that science is no longer fixated on just chemistry, biology, and physics. Right? It is actually very interdisciplinary in nature. Right? So the elements of collaboration needs to come in. And that's also what we hope students to develop in this program. And last, communication, which I have said at length in the previous slide, that communication for scientists is very important because they must be able to communicate the science ideas that they have discovered, right, to share it with the masses. So these are the five student dispositions that we hope to inculcate in our students if they come, I mean, if they join the SCORE program. So more details about the program. The program actually consists of a three and a half year program with two components, right? So earlier, uh, the um, the main uh, focus of the program was to uh, develop principal uh, investigators and good communicators of science, right? So you will see here the two main prongs of the program, which is a focus on research, right? Which is to uh, address the investigation part and as well as mentorship by a science teacher or an industry partner, right? So these are the two main prongs of the three and a half year program. But I will go into more details for this. So the timeline for the three and a half year program looks something like that, right? So at the lower secondary, we will actually provide foundation knowledge for the students, foundation training in terms of research, in terms of ethics, in terms of collaboration skills. Right? And then we will guide them in some uh, simple investigations to get them familiarized with the scientific uh, method of uh, investigation. And then subsequently, when we go up to second, uh, upper secondary, we will actually let go a bit more, allow the students more autonomy to decide on the kind of projects that they want to do. Right? We will have the research mentorship by uh, either teachers or industry partners, like I mentioned earlier. Right? And the students will actually work on a capstone research project. Uh, in an area of their interest, right? At the end of the program, uh, they will actually be required to present what they have uh, researched, and that could also be a overseas uh, component right, in the program. So to break it off further, in the first year, uh, our mantra is really show me, help me, let me, right? Basically, right, we are trying to role model what uh, science skills, science, uh, what skills scientists have in terms of the research skills, in terms of ethics in science, in terms of collaboration and communication, right? And slowly let go in terms of giving them opportunities to try, right? And eventually the let me phase is to let them have opportunity to uh, participate in their own science investigation, right? The second year, we will continue to deepen their research skills. Okay? And then we will start to broaden their perspectives. Right? We will give them opportunity uh, to take part in competitions, right? uh, whether internal within the school or external um, uh, in, in our external platforms. Right? And the mantra is really if they, are, if they are given the opportunity to represent the school in competitions and events and they can share their science knowledge, then it actually leads to them understanding and deepening their, uh, their knowledge in science. Year three and four, like I said earlier, will be a capstone uh, research project, right? So in the capstone research project, um, the focus is really that in the lower side, they are the learners. Now we are trying to move them towards uh, expertise. Right? So as experts, um, of course, they will be mentored by the teacher, right? But eventually they should be quite independent in uh, being able to manage their own research, understanding uh, what are the uh, uh, variables that they need to control, what are the data that they need to collect, and so on and so forth. So I, in the slides, I've listed two examples of research topics. Right? It can be as 
it can be as uh, simple as the uh, effects of sleep habits on academic achievements. So that if we were to think about that research topic itself, uh, then from the student's perspective, how would they go about uh, studying this, right? Because they will need to consider, for example, gender of the students that they might want to interview. Uh, it will be a sharing uh, of their findings at the end of it. Okay, similar to the earlier two uh, sharing presentations by um, sports as well as uh, service leadership, um, this is the slide to show what's the application process like. So in the application itself, uh, we are looking for students who actually have a history in participation in science-related activities uh, in and beyond primary school. Right, so if the student has really taken part in activities in the primary school, uh, there's no need for any additional submission of documents because we can actually um, obtain the documents of uh, uh, an internal uh, system. Right? But if your child has participated in any science-related activities uh, beyond primary school on their own, uh -huh. uh, on their own um, uh, initiative, then you would need to submit uh, some evidence of showing that the child has actually uh, participated in those activities right second is the teacher's recommendation and the um, a history of team-based collaboration if any right this would be great because like i said earlier one of the dispositions that we are looking for is that students can actually collaborate right i mean if if i mean if they are if they work alone then they need to learn how to uh, develop this skill right the second uh, component of uh, the application process is the interview. Now, in the interview, there are actually two parts. The first part, uh, a panel of teachers will actually conduct an interview with your child. Um, in the interview, what will we ask? We will ask things to find out more about the child's interests and passion in science. So, like I said earlier, if you actually applied and um, showed evidence that the child took part in uh, certain science-related activities, we may find out more about that. We may ask the child what did he learn, uh, what is which part of science is he interested in, um, and why is he interested in science. So that is the uh, first part, which is conducted um, uh, individually, right? So we will interview one child and then with a panel of teachers. The second part of the interview is actually an online collaboration with students from other schools to analyze the science experiment, right? So what the child will need to do is. There'll be an online meeting. We will present a task, a science experiment task, and the group of students from different schools will need to discuss how they will go about uh, conducting the science experiment, right? And then obtaining uh, the data from it. And so that is a two-part uh, interview process. Okay, that's the end for my slides. Um, if you have any queries, you can actually write to myself, uh, my email is there, or you can write to my subject head in science, uh, Traven, his email is also there. Uh, please also give us your feedback using the QR code. Um, if you have more questions, you can use the uh, link uh, below the YouTube uh, live video to submit your questions. Over to you, Pahai. Thank you very much, Mr. Eric Tan. Uh, next, let us invite our principal, Mrs. Lim, to address some questions that have been sent earlier to us. Mrs. Lim, please. Sure. Let me pull up the slides. My apologies to parents who may have been with us since earlier today, because this would be a little repetitive for you. But this is for the benefit for those parents who only just recently joined us. Right, so I'd like to address the general questions so that we can clarify the DSA process and application with all of you. First question, my child may be eligible for more than a single criteria. So how does that work? Rest assured that you can apply for more than one talent area from a school. But on the DSA portal, applicants have up to three choices and therefore three talent areas. If you are applying for the same school, you can indicate up to a maximum of two talent areas. So for instance, if you are interested in GSS science and also in service leadership, those would be two 
different talent areas and therefore two separate choices. All right, question two. What are some of the documents we need to submit for DSA? Actually, everything should be automatically shared with us from your child's primary school uh, back end by, through the MOE system. So this information will be your child's P5 and P6 academic results, CCAs, VIA involvement, all school-based achievements and awards, NAPFA results, GSA participation, if any. So you do not need to input this information. However, if you have information on activities and achievements which are related to your child's talent area outside of school, you can provide this information on the DSA portal. There's a limit of 10 entries and you do not need to, to submit supporting documents with these on the portal. Third question. Previous year, we will take into account P6 mid-year exam results. How about this year? Well, we all know this year is an exceptional year and nationwide, our students do not have mid-year exams this year. So for academic results, we will take these into consideration. The Term 1 progress report for P6 and the P5 semester 1 and semester 2 results. Question 4. If my child loses interest in the program, can he or she opt out? The DSA program has been developed so that we can help each child fully hone this talent. So it is advisable that he or she can sustain this interest for the throughout the period of secondary school life. So it is MOE's policy that the student should commit to this DSA program, sustain it, and in the event that, therefore, at this point, your child is not quite sure that it is really what he or she can sustain throughout secondary school, then it may be advisable to reconsider the DSA option. I'll take the other two questions, these two together, five and six. What is the aggregate for DSA admission and what is our cutoff for this year's intake? So, Jurong Secondary School's cutoff is uh, shown on the screen for your reference. And in terms of aggregate, actually, there is no particular aggregate for DSA admission. What we do is that we take reference from MOE. So MOE's admission policy for 2019, it is on their website, that any student with aggregate score of 188 and above will be eligible for the express course. So similarly, we take this into account. Right. Okay, now my final question that I have for clarification is um, about allocation. Important question, how do we allocate our DSA students to the different classes? So no different, really. No different from the other students. Together with the rest of the Set 1 cohort coming in next year, it will be randomly allocated to our eight Set 1 classes based on the course that they are eligible for. And we want to let you know that Jurong Secondary is a pilot school for full subject-based spending where we have a different form for the SEC1 class, a different arrangement. Each SEC1 class, smaller than the usual. Usual is about 40 in a class. We have a smaller class, about 34, 34 students. And this form class will have a mixture of students from different courses. So each class will comprise approximately 20 from Express, about 9 from NA, about 5 from NT. Right, so those are the questions I have. I hand over the time back to Fahim. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Lim. Um, now, the next segment is a Q&A session to address questions specific to SCORE DSE. So uh, let's once again um, invite Mr. Tan. Hi, Mr. Tan. Yeah, hi. Okay, so the first question uh, that has been asked uh, by parents is, will my child be dropped from the SCORE program if he does not do well in the subject in lower secondary? I'm, I, I, I'm, uh, I think this history, uh, this parent is referring to the science subject. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so, so if you recall, SCORE actually means science, communication and research. Right? Mm -hmm. So we are actually not looking at whether the student is very strong in mm -hmm. science. We are looking more for the fact that the students actually have an interest in deepening mm -hmm. science, deepening their interest in science as well as in conducting science research. 
Mm. But it's good they do not need to be very good in science. Although, mm. I must say that it is probably uh, a subset. La. You you must you must love science and do well in science in order to really like the program, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, right. So they won't be dropped, right? Because at the end of the day, we still want to develop their interest. Mm -hmm. uh, if the students are actually not doing well, then the school has other uh, programs in place, like our mm -hmm. after-school academic program, to support mm -hmm. your child in uh, ensuring that they do not fall back in their studies. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Um, let's move on to the second question. Do I need to score very well in my other subjects to qualify for DSA score? Uh, no, not necessarily. Uh, because for DSA, we don't look at uh, the academic results. But mm -hmm. like I said, during the interview, we actually find out more about whether your child uh, is interested in science, what are the areas that they're interested in, what have they done in terms of uh, their interests, how have mm. they actually deepened their interest in the primary, mm. primary school. And mm. these are the indicators that will actually tell us if uh, the student is actually um, uh, fit for the program or not. Mm. Okay. And the last question for today, um, if, if the child, wait, hang on. Um, if my child did not participate in the Science Olympiad, is it okay to apply? And what is the criteria then to apply? Sure. So, Olympiad is not necessary. Uh, it can be any other science-based activity. I mean, the truth is, if you if you have a, a group of candidates and one of the students only says, okay, I, I score 90 out of 100 for science, mm -hmm. but has no other uh, record of uh, participating in science-related activities, whether within the school or outside of school, then, to be honest, that candidate doesn't... Uh, uh, rate very highly in comparison to other candidates who may not score so well in science but has evidence of uh, showing interest in deepening their science knowledge in other area, uh, outside of school right mm -hmm. like maybe they go to science center on your own or they take part in the science center programs mm -hmm. or they actually you know read uh, uh, science fiction books avidly that kind of mm -hmm. thing right so that there must be some other uh component or element that tells us that the child actually does more than what the science curriculum in the primary school is because we are not looking for science nerds right at the end of the day we want the students to mm -hmm. to love and deepen science not just study science so score program is not for students who say i want to go into school because i want to get a1 in all my science subjects uh, at the national exam that's not uh, that's not the point I yeah, so I hope I've also answered the second question on the yes. criteria. Uh, yes, you have. Yeah, yes. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tan. Sure. Thank you very much. Okay, we've come to the end of our DSAE briefing talk um, for uh, SCORE, that is Science, Communication and Research. We hope that you've been able to learn more about this DSA program and you've gained an, a better insight into um, how this program is run. Now, um, please do leave us your feedback by clicking on the link below the video, right? Thank you very much for joining us today and have a great weekend. Goodbye.